All right, y'all, today I wanna to talk about something that can literally make or break you as a trader. And this is something that I see so many people struggle with. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel because this content could literally change the way you trade overnight. And this is how to never FOMO again, how to take all emotion out of trading, at least out of the process of trading. And what I mean by that is this, we are human, we feel emotions. And when you are in a good trade, when you are in a bad trade, you are going to feel emotions. There is no way around that. I don't care how long you've been trading. You are going to feel some kind of emotion. But here's the goal. The goal should be to take the emotion out of the process of doing analysis and entering a trade and exiting a trade. If emotion is coming into your analysis, if emotion is coming into these series of events that lead up to you either pushing that buy or that sell. If emotions are getting in the way of you taking profits or setting a stop loss, that is a problem. Because trading is easy in theory. Anybody can do technical analysis and anybody can basically say, if price gets to this specific level and I see bullish confirmations, I will go long. In fact, that is the way I trade. For example, the last Bitcoin long we took here in the VIP Discord the trade setup was given by myself a day in advance where basically I said if price comes to the confluence at the golden pocket and I see bullish divergences on the 12 minute time frame, I will enter a long position. And of course, that's exactly what happened. We came down to the golden pocket. If we take our Fibonacci retracement tool from down here to the high, we can see that we come right into our golden pocket with the bullish divergences on the 12 minute time frame and then it's off to the races. But we can see before it's off to the races, there is some trouble here. And I talk to a lot of people who know how to trade, but they always run into the same mistakes. They have the theory correct, they have the technical analysis correct, they know what to look for, but they run into these mistakes. Either they chase price and get wrecked because they don't have the patience to wait, and so they are chasing price. If they see price is really starting to pump, maybe they'll enter into a long right here, and end up at a break even or even worse a loss or if they see prices dumping they'll FOMO into a short and then they will get stopped out like for example right here when price started to dump a lot of people shorted right here and then immediately got stopped out or maybe they will take profit too early because they're not secure in their position so they get into a really good position let's say they longed it right here they close the trade right here and then they miss out on all this profit Another thing that emotions do to traders is they don't take profits early enough. Where let's say, for example, you are short from right here. And this is actually a bad example. Let's find another example. Let's say that you were long from right here and you were in a lot of profit, feeling really good about it. Now your trade is back to break even. You're like, oh man, I hope it goes back up. It goes back up. You're like, oh, I don't want to take profits out yet. It's not as high as it was before. Now you're in the red, coming back up. You're like, oh, I, I, I want it to go higher, and then boom, next thing you know, you're liquidated, stopped out, in a loss. Another thing traders do is they get scared and close the trade in a red, and then it goes in their favor. So for example, let's say you would enter right here because we came to a level of support with a bullish divergence, and all of a sudden the price starts to dump down. You're not confident, you close the trade because you're scared, and there's the emotion, and you see the red, and then after you close the trade, and you're like, phew, I'm glad I got out of that one, boom price pumps. Okay. So other things people have trouble with emotionally is they know what to do, but they can't pull the trigger. They know price is at a level. They know they should enter a trade. They see their confirmations on market cipher, but they don't pull the trigger and they miss out on the gains. And then the trades that they do enter end up being losses and it messes with their mind. And the last thing is people mostly take good trades, but they ruin all their hard work Everything that they have built up in their account over the past weeks or even months, trading with good risk management, sticking to a strategy, in just one or two horrible revenge trades or FOMO trades, they blow it all. And so in this video, I want to go over the process that you need to have when you are approaching these markets. And this process is literally going to take the emotion out of it. Now, it's not going to take the emotion out of trading is going to take the emotion out of the process. What I mean by that is this. I am a human. Right now, I'm in a very high leverage long from right down here, and it feels pretty dang good. I can go back and look at my trade and say, hey, 
I long the bottom. It feels really good. The euphoria comes. And you know what? I embrace that. When I take a loss, I feel the disappointment. I go back and I look at my mistakes. I'm like, I can't believe I made this mistake. And I embrace the emotion after the fact. But when it comes to actually executing, when it comes to doing the analysis and actually clicking buy and sell, you need to take the emotion out of that. Because people say you need to take the emotions out of trading. I say it's impossible. We are emotional beings. But what we can control is taking emotion out of a technical process and then leaving the emotion to come after we've already done the technical things. Okay, so here is the process that needs to be done in order for you to have success at this. Because like I said, I firmly believe that everybody can be a profitable trader. I firmly believe that. Anybody can do it. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how smart you are. Because there are simple things that we can do in order to be good at this. Trading is simply flipping a coin. It's either going to go in your way or it's not. If you can find ways to load the dice so that price goes in your favor and practice good risk management so that you're not blowing your whole account in one stupid trade, it's mathematically highly improbable that you are going to blow your account. And it becomes mathematically probable that you will be profitable over time and see your account grow over weeks, months, and years. So this is the process that has helped me immensely. Number one, have a plan before taking any trade. For me, this is determining what levels I am looking to trade and then determining what confirmations I am looking at before I enter a trade. For example, the long. I posted it in the VIP Discord. By the way, if you want to join the Discord where I post potential trade setups as well as daily technical analysis updates, as well as a thriving community of beastly traders in here, absolutely amazing traders in here, posting the best technical analysis, all different styles of trading, um, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. Okay, a great community to learn and we pride ourselves in in a positive environment, conducive to learning and building other people up. But when it comes to my trading plans, what I do when I look at a chart is I first determine what level I am interested in looking at it, taking a trade. In this case, I was interested in taking a long from the confluence of the golden pocket Fibonacci retracement. In this area, we also did have a point of control. If we take the volume from this entire chunk, we can see, hang on, from this entire chunk right over here, we can see that the... Um, Wait a second, what chunk was I looking at? I know I had a chunk here. It was probably this chunk. Nope. Now look at me, I'm flopping and groping on the dang internet trying to tell you guys the confluence I had. This was it. We had a high volume node right here. Okay. Um, maybe I pulled it from this high here. Yes. We had a high volume node right here. We had a golden pocket. And we also had a naked point of control. And so right away I said, my plan is if we come to this juicy confluence and... I see my confirmations. I will enter the trade. What were the confirmations I was looking for? I was looking for bullish divergences on the 12 minute time frame. So when we come down to the level and I see bullish divergences on the 12 minute time frame, this now gives me confirmation to enter the trade. Okay. Very clearly, we have come to my level with my confirmations. Okay. Now we're going to get into more of this, but this is the first step of the process okay step number two is you have to promise yourself to never ever ever even think about entering into a trade unless price has come to your level and you have your confirmations this is crucial it should not even be on the table not at all now Am I saying that you can't come up with a level and confirmation on the fly? No, I'm not saying that. The more experienced you get, you'll be able to look at a chart. You'll be able to see a level. You'll be able to see the confirmations in five minutes, enter a trade in a very short period of time. But here's the thing. You have to make sure that regardless of how long that period of time is where you are gathering your um, plan and your level, that you are not entering a trade unless you have both a level and a clear confirmation that you are looking for. The purpose of doing this is that it eliminates FOMO and it eliminates emotional trading because you have always a reason to wait. Okay, a prime example of that is a short that I just took today. 
okay? I just took a short today. In the VIP live stream that I just did for Bitcoin, we were looking at a potential short in the Discord right before I did the Bitcoin live stream, okay? And it was this one right here. Basically, we had four potential levels that I was looking for, and two of them were chicken drinking water wicks, okay? What is a chicken drinking water wick? If you want more information about that, you could check out my trading course where I go through all the different strategies I use to trade. And by the way, if you do want to learn how to trade the way I do, you can check out jasoncaspertrading.com. This course will give you the knowledge and the skills you need to become a confident, profitable trader, where we teach you how to read the charts and feel confident in your trades, how to stop FOMO trading. We go into much more detail with the things I'm talking about today, how to utilize tested strategies, how to maximize profits through risk management mindsets and stuff like that. It's currently a 20% discount in the description of the video. You can check out the success stories right here. Check it out. Go through everything you need to know, even if you've never looked at a chart before. In depth, how I use my indicators, various different profitable strategies, mindset, risk management, 20% discount in the description. So we were looking at a chicken's drinking water trade setup, okay? And we got it, okay? We got it right here. And this was a scalp short that I took and many other people took. And here's the thing. Before we got my setup, okay? Because I was I was waiting, I was waiting very, very patiently actually to take a short trade from this level right here, okay? About 38.7, give or take. Now, when I was in my own Discord, some very good traders who I respect highly were taking shorts before I was taking a short. They were shorting this wick right here, okay? And it's not a bad scalp at all if you're prepared for it and you had a plan for it. And yes, they had a level and they had their confirmations to short this right here for a nice little scalp of about 0.8%. That's a wonderful scalp. Here's the thing. I personally did not have a plan to short that level. I did not. Okay. And so I told myself, Jason, you don't have a level there and you don't know what confirmations you're looking for to enter that trade. So don't even think about taking the trade. And I saw people in the Discord taking the trade, taking profit. It looked like it was a great short, and it was a great short. But here's the thing. It is not part of my plan. And if it's not part of my plan, then it cannot be something that I even entertain. And the reason for that is because once you start entertaining entering trades that you have not thoroughly thought out and planned for, you are setting yourself up for failure. I cannot tell you how many times... I have talked to people who message me and say, Jason, what should I do? I longed from 69K and now I'm about to get liquidated and I don't know, should I add margin? Do you think the price is going to go back up? And I say, what made you get into this situation in the first place? Why are you in this predicament? And when we dig down, the reason is always because they entered into a trade without a clear plan. They didn't have a clear entry point. They definitely didn't have a bail ship uh, a bail, whatever, abandon all ships point, right? They, they didn't have an exit strategy if things went wrong. They, they didn't have any plan. And now they're in this horrible predicament, okay? And so what I did instead was I waited for my plan. And it took a while, right? It took, this is the 12, 18 minute chart. So let's see how long I had to wait for my trade to actually get triggered. I had to wait another two hours. I had to wait another two hours. And, um... You know, I patiently waited, and then what happened was I actually got my trade with my confirmations, which was coming above this level with a bearish divergence on the one-minute time frame with money flow coming down, which we absolutely did get, and I was able to take my short. The reason I go through all this, guys, is because if you do not have a plan for a trade, there are going to be lots of things out there calling for your attention. You're going to watch a YouTube video, and it's going to be an emergency update. That says Bitcoin's about to break out. You need to go long now. Or it's going to say, you know, this is it. The news is coming out. Bitcoin's going to 20K. And you might FOMO into a short. If you have this process, you are never going to be tempted to FOMO. And this also gives you a very easy two-second self-quiz before clicking that buy or sell button. Okay? You, you, let's say right now, oh, crap, price is pumping. Uh, should I enter a long? Ask yourself these two questions. Do I have a level here? And if the answer is yes, do I have confirmations here? And if the answer is yes, then you can enter the trade, okay? So the third step of this process is when price comes to your level and you wait patiently. I, I waited patiently for the long, for this short, you know, I had to wait hours, right? I had to wait hours. 
for the long trade I took last night, I had to wait days. I waited two days for that trade, for this trade. I gave this setup on the on yesterday morning, in the morning, and I didn't take it until yesterday night. So I had to wait like 14 hours for it, okay? And in that time, I didn't take any trades because I they weren't part of my plan. There were trades I could have taken. I didn't take them. Why? I was waiting for something else. It was part of my plan. And so when the price finally does come to this level, now, instead of thinking, uh-oh, what do I do? I already know what to do. I already know what to do. I have a very, very clear stop loss plan. If price comes lower than here, I know the trade is invalidated and I need to get out. I have very, very clear take profit levels, right? Very clear take profit levels. Um, I already have everything planned out. And so when price comes to my level, I simply ask myself the question, do I see confirmation? If the answer is yes, and the answer was yes last night, then I simply enter the trade and I stick to my plan. There's no second guessing because I've already determined in my heart that if price comes down to my level of support, which it did right over here, and I see my confirmation, which I do right here, I will enter the trade with good risk management and without emotion, and then I will leave that trade alone until either TP1 is hit or the stop loss is hit. Now, risk management is very important. I don't have time to get into it in this video, but here's the thing. If you're not utilizing proper risk management, you are not going to be able to follow this. And the reason is because if you are risking more than you know you should, you are not going to be able to leave the trade alone until either TP1 or the stop loss is hit. Last night, I literally was hanging out with my wife. We were in bed about to go to sleep. We were reading books, as we do, okay? I was reading the book of Genesis in Hebrew, one of my favorite books to read in one of my favorite languages. And I got my alert, right? I got my alert. We go to bed early. We're old. We're old people. We're homesteaders. We're Americans. We're hardworking. We have kids, right? We're tired. I got my alert. I opened up my phone. I took a look at Market Cipher B. I saw uneven butt cheeks on the 12-minute time frame. Uneven butt cheeks is where we have a bullish divergence, that big old juicy fl fluffy old butt cheek on the left followed by that skinny old butt cheek on the right. Okay, you see right here? Big old butt cheek on the left, skinny butt cheek on the right. And I didn't even have to think twice about it. I opened up Bybit. I selected the amount of contracts that I knew fit my risk management strategy at the leverage that I knew fit my risk management strategy. I clicked buy or long and I entered into the trade. I set my stop loss at the area where I knew it had to be. I set my take profits and I went to sleep. I went to sleep and I woke up in good profit. If you trade this way, it will stop that crazy, never-ending, nagging feeling that you have when you are in a trade. At least it will make it go away much less because you're checking your trades not to see if you're totally wrecked or not. You're just checking your trades to kind of monitor them. Has my take profit gotten hit? Has my stop loss gotten hit? If my stop loss gets hit, not a big deal. I move on to the next trade because I didn't really risk too much money. Sticking to good risk management, on to the next trade. Now, what I like to do, and this is optional, but when take profit one is hit, you can move the stop loss to the entry or below the last swing low. And so for example, let's say when the stop loss, my original stop loss was pretty dang low. Okay, it was like down here. And this is like a 35X leverage trade too. Uh, so, you know, I had a lot of playing room here. And the way I do this is, you know, if you want more on how I do my risk management, and how I use high leverage, you can check out the course at jasoncaspertrading.com. But, you know, I woke up, my take profit one had been hit. My take profit two had been hit. And now, I, when I woke up, we were like somewhere up here. And what I did was I moved the stop loss underneath the last swing low, like literally just to the point where if the price comes down to make a lower low, I know the uptrend is over. What this guarantees is that if I do get stopped out, because I had a really good entry here, I'd actually still be in profit. And then I just set some more take profit limit orders along the way up, All right? Set more take profit limit orders along the way up. And it's a very stress-free way to trade, all right? And, um, you know, this is something that has really, really helped me. And again, I cannot stress this enough, but risk management is so key. If you're not entering trades with good risk management, you're not going to be able to follow this. If you want to learn more about trading and how I trade in risk management, you can check out jasoncaspertrading.com. 
This course has helped thousands of people even go from uh, being losing traders to quitting their job to trade full time. Also, if you do want to get into the Discord, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Jason Casper. I hope you found this video helpful. If you got any value out of this video, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because the purpose of this channel is education to help you learn how to do technical analysis and paper trade because I don't trade with real money. I paper trade. This is what I look like. I look like a total idiot. You would never take financial advice from this guy because this is not financial advice. That being said, God bless all of you. In the name of Jesus the Messiah, Yeshua the Messiah, I do pray all of you watching this are very blessed. And I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.